One of the cool things about working at a big company is you get to see how a big company builds, launches, scales, do a plethora of things. But in our case, as web developers, as software engineers, working at a big company means you get to see how they deploy web applications. And that's what I want to share with you today. I know most of us are used to get commit, get pushed straight to GitHub, and then that deploys straight to Vercel, and that workflow is great. But I think there's a lot to learn by understanding how big companies deploy their applications and what they're thinking of and how they handle things. And that's what we're going to get into today. Now, with that being said, there's two things that we're really going to think about. We're going to think about a front end. And in, in for simplicity's sake, it's going to be a React application. And we're going to think of a back end, which is going to consist of APIs and a database. And this API can be TS, JS, Java, Go, .NET, whatever you want. And there are two big considerations we have to make. The first one is speed slash latency. So our application has to be performing, it has to be fast. We don't want our users to just wait for the page to load, for the screens to load, that, that's not great user experience. And the second is compliance. Our application has to be compliant. And now I know for most of us indie devs, compliance doesn't mean anything. Uh, but in, in, in big business, uh, big companies, compliance is everything because you can lose business with compliance. And especially if you work with governments and stuff, you have to be compliant. Compliance is a whole big thing that we indie devs um, or software engineers ourselves when we build our side projects don't think about. But big companies think about this a lot. And we're going to go through all of this today. But real quick, I want to shout out Miro for sponsoring this video. They have an awesome tool to help you chart, diagram, plan, brain dump any of your ideas. They also have some cool AI features, which we're going to use. I just want to give them a quick shout out for sponsoring this video. Without further ado, though, we're going to get into it. So real quick, I want to draw a flow chart on how backends are deployed at big companies. Now, I'm going to be generalizing every company is different. I wrote a prompt that I'm going to paste here. And basically, we want a flow chart that shows picking the most closest data center to deploy our backend to our users. So latency can be small and consider government compliance, right? This isn't even the best prompt, but the AI tool is good. So we're going to click generate diagram. So this is the flow chart to design for us. And it's, it's actually perfect. So when deploying a backend, you got to think of a couple of things. First, you got to identify where majority of your users are going to be. Let's say, um, let me draw real quick a circle. Let's say this is the earth, right? Beautiful earth. So yeah, let's say most of my users are in Europe and I have a good chunk in North America too. So Europe and North America is where most of my users are. So first things first, I'm going to identify my user location, North America and Europe, um, or let's just say United States um, and UK. We're going to check government compliance, right? So let's say the UK government makes it so that whatever user information I have um, that are from UK residents has to be stored in the United Kingdom. So I have to find a data center where it's stored in the United Kingdom. And let's say for American user information, it has to be stored in America. The data center I store that data has to be in America. So that's the government compliance, let's just say. Right. And then we're going to find data centers that are compliant. Right. So data centers in the U.S. and data centers in the United Kingdom. And one thing, for example, this is a chart of Azure, uh, which is Microsoft's deployment service competitor of AWS. Notice how they have data centers in central U.S., north central U.S., east U.S. They have West Europe, U.K. South, U.K. West, North. So they have data centers in all these different locations. So if I have customers in the U.S. and the U.S. government uh, demands that I store the American user information in the U.S., I'm going to deploy in one of these locations, whether it be North Central U.S., East U.S., whichever is closest to the majority of my users, I'm going to deploy. Same thing for my U.K. users, whatever is closest to them, I'm going to deploy, right? So I found my data centers. I found the closest one, right? If I don't, I should continue to find the closest one. And I deploy to the closest data center and then I monitor latency. Now, here's the reason why distance is important. Most of us, when we deploy to Vercel, when we pick, pick a region, we probably just pick US East or US West. And it's very important that you understand that the distance is important. And what do I mean by that? Let's say you have a front end application, right? And your front end React application is hosted in Canada. Let's say out of all countries, you decided to host it in Canada. But then let's say your back end is hosted all the way in UK South. So you have a back end and the back end is in UK South. Now, here's the thing. This application is going to work, 
But the problem is when a user is on your front end and makes a request, like does some sort of action that triggers a request, the request has to go all the way from Canada to UK back to Canada. This is a pretty long distance, right? And by the way, one neat trick that they have is if you click on shapes and you click on more shapes, there's a plethora of shapes there. But if the application, and then let me use my drawing tool, if we have an application that's in the front end is in Canada and the back end is also in Canada, right? Now I have the distance that it's going to take to go from front end to back end and then back into front end, right? Get the, uh, fire the request, get the data from the request to show on the front end. The distance is smaller. And one of the best ways to keep your latency low is you want your front end application, this right here, to be as close as possible with your back end, right? Because the closer it is to your back end, let me just drag this here. The closer it is to your back end, the faster the data from the server will be rendered on the client. Distance is very important. And with this in mind, how do we deploy our back end and how do we deploy our front end? Now, if we have a React spa, the way we're going to deploy this, or one way we could deploy this, is in a global. CDN, right? So for example, if we go to Cloudflare, so Cloudflare, for example, have a CDN where it's in 300 different cities over more than 120 countries, meaning you can deploy your React application in their CDN in multiple regions, right? This means that uh, the user who's in West, around West US, will have a React deployment that's close to West US. Someone who's in West Europe will have a deployment close to West Europe. So if I'm in Europe, when I go on that website, when I go on that domain, it's going to go to the closest data center, to the closest CDN. But what about my back end? How is the how is the back end going to be deployed? And there's various strategies to doing this, but I'm going to show you the simplest. Um, like in a very simple high level way. So I'm going to take my entire back end and I'm just going to drag it over here. What most companies do, or I'll say some because I don't know what most companies do, but what some companies do that I know is they will containerize this, right? They will use Docker, for example, right? And then I will just make this plain, clear background. They will use Docker, for example. So you see Docker in the center. They will containerize this application. And what they will do is they will deploy different variants of this application in different regions, right? So going back to this map, let's say a good chunk of my users are, let me get my pencil, are concentrated in the US and they're concentrated in the UK. Right. So I'm going to make sure my compliance is good first. And once my compliance is good, it's a game of picking the closest region to most of my users. So let's say most of my users are either in the West Coast or the East Coast. So guess what I'll do? I'll deploy uh, a containerized version of my back end here. I'll deploy a containerized version of my back end here and I'll deploy a containerized version of my back end here. Now, the reason why this is important is because U.S user information can only be stored in the US and UK user information can only be stored in the UK. By the way, these aren't exact compliance rules. I'm just using it as an example to demonstrate my point. But our React front end can be globally deployed on a CDN. Now you might ask, why can we use a CDN for React, like deployed, it can be in every region, but why do we have to specifically pick our backend? And here's the reason why. The React application is client facing. It's not going to store any data. The storing of data, the manipulating of data, the changing of data, all the CRUD op operations are going to happen in the back end. So where you deploy your back end from a compliance perspective is very, very important. But where you deploy your front end, if it's a full client side application, does not matter because it does not store any user information. So you can use something like React or Azure or AWS and globally deploy your uh, React on a CDN, on a global CDN. But then when it comes to your back end, you're probably going to have to containerize it and pick the proper uh, regions that are close to your user, but where you also uh, adhere to the compliance of that jurisdiction. So to summarize, uh, how do big companies deploy? They meet compliance requirements, right? They have to be compliant and uh, latency is important. So deploy the backend to the closest region 
uh, where users are. And then the back end uh, in terms of uh, front end, sorry, and the front end, if client side, if client only, deploy on global CDN. And the reason why this works perfectly is, again, going back to this region, if I have users on US and Europe, my C my React is deployed globally in multiple regions, multiple countries, and my backend is deployed closest to my users. So whenever someone goes on my website, they go, they ping the closest uh, center. And when they do an action that requires uh, the backend that requires that sends over requests to the backend, that backend is also super close to the front end, overall giving the user a pleasant and fast experience. So you got to keep things close, right? You got to keep things close and you got to be compliant. That is how big companies deploy their application or the methodology they use to deploy their web applications. Actually, one cool way to summarize everything on your board is using Miro AI. I can click on create with AI. And then what I can do is I can highlight everything on the board. So I just did command A, and I'm going to say summarize everything on the board. And what it's going to do is it's going to take in all the context and it's going to summarize everything I just discussed with you in a document form. So you can see here summary of board context, key considerations, speed and latency, compliance, technology and tools, Docker, database, APIs, front end, deployment strategies, back end, deploy back end services using technology such as Java, Go, .NET, ASAP, prioritize deploying these services in regions closest to their user base to, minimum, to minimize latency, front end, deploy front end on a global CDN to ensure fast content delivery and improved user experience globally. And it, it mentions Canada because I mentioned Canada, best practices, global CDN, technology stack, deployment insights, big companies, deployment, large enterprises typically deploy their web applications by strategically placing backend services close to users and using global CDNs for front end distribution to achieve optimal performance and compliance. What a great tool to summarize your brain dubs. One last cool thing about Miro AI I want to show off is the mind maps. I can even, I, I can even create a mind map like this, create a mind map for me to use when deploying my my back end to the closest region of a user while still being compliant and i'm going to do generate a diagram and you're going to see it's just going to take my brain dump and create such a wonderful mind map so it says deploying a back end to closest re re region right compliance requirements identify user location. So I need to some identify the user location. I need to figure out what the compliance requirements are. I need to test and validate that this is actually working, right? I need to select the closest region. What are the available regions? What's the latency considerations? What load balancing do I have to do? You know, where do I deploy? What provider do I use? Is there any infra as a code that I use like Terraform? Have I set up my CI CD uh, systems? How do I monitor? So Miro AI has a plethora of tools that allows me to, again, take my brain dump and construct it into actionable data. I hope that made sense. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. What are your thoughts? How does your company handle deployment? I would love to learn. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I appreciate you as always. And also, don't forget, make sure to check out Miro down below in the link in the description and use their Miro AI features. It's a great place to get creative, to plan and to strategize. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.